everybody. Uh, this is Sports Fanag News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is the next edition of the Grittiest Take, a reaction to that absolute crapshoot of a game embarrassment. No nicer way to put it, but real quick, before we get into the embarrassment, check out Jamie Baskell on Flyers Nitty Gritty. The Flyers were lifeless last night, and it was unacceptable article. And Mike writes, Flyers fans outraged over St. Patrick's Day Massacre. Plus, Flyers fans left embarrassed. <clears throat> After a slaughter by Alex, Alec Reich as well. Check out all those articles on Flyers Nitty Gritty. There's great Flyers coverage over there. I also write for that site. Definitely check it out. They do some great things. And all brought up great points. I mean, the Flyers do not protect their goaltending well at all. It was said in um, one of the quotes by head coach Elaine Vigneault. Um, yesterday, um, he said we got truly embarrassed. It was embarrassed to be playing on that ice tonight. The way we played, we didn't help our goalies at all. We know we got to wake up. Everybody knows that's not acceptable. There needs to be an answer tomorrow, um, which tomorrow is, of course, assessing today's game, or addressing today's game, excuse me, which is the Islanders game that I'll do a preview to shortly thereafter this video premieres. But there's that's just unacceptable. You're playing a Rangers team, which on Monday you were able to – I don't even think persevere is the word, but kind of like grit through a win because Voracek, Mr. Clutch, had a great assist to Giroux, who's been money since coming back from COVID, and then also had a long-ass shift that he was just able to get through. He persevered. That's a good way to put the word persevere, where to put it. Voracek just had a great, great shift that he persevered through. And like Fairby said, that's why he gets paid the bucks uh, because he's able to go on those long shifts and then get going a little bit up the ice and score a beautiful goal. But that wasn't the sexiest game. You had to battle through it. It was like the Buffalo game where you went, you should have been able to take advantage of the game and not had to win in a shootout. Well, the same premise was this, even in a bigger value because you were up two nothing. You shouldn't have let them come back and go up twice and have to work your way back. And then in this game, you just got slaughtered. Um, th there was just no compete level at all. Um, there was no fight, no grit. Um, there was nothing. I mean, Jamie in his article brought up the game in 2013 where Ray Emery won the Flyers lost 7 nothing. at least fought uh, Holpe. And uh, that was at least showing the guy to try to get momentum going into the next game. This team hasn't really had anything that's in bad games, in bad performances, which has been unfortunately way too many of late, showing that spunk to be able to provide any fire in their bellies going into the next game. Because going into the next game, you're going to have to perform very well early since the Isles, which I'll get into more in the next video, have not did not play uh, yesterday, and you did. But this game was just unacceptable. I mean, you let Brendan Lemieux score... Um, Panarin score in the first, Buznevich, Buznevich again, uh, Truba of all people scored, uh, the Flyers keep letting guys that don't even score on team score, Zibanejad scored, Zibanejad again, and Zibanejad again for a three in a row, oh my god, I didn't even, I just ended up shutting the game off to be quite honest at that point that I didn't even realize until doing the video that he had the natural three in a row hat trick, that's even worse, um, Jesus, like, that's terrible, honestly. Um, Heidel uh, was able to score. He's the guy that made it 9 nothing in the second. And then I guess the Rangers had some mercy on us and uh, did not score any in the third. But that's still highly unacceptable. And the Flyers need to perform better. Like, they haven't been defending their goalie at all in this stretch run. Sure, you had issues from COVID. People went out from COVID, and I hope... And pray that the Phantoms, who unfortunately, who I do not know, their game is postponed tomorrow against Wilkes-Barre Scranton due to COVID protocols. Again, hopefully they're able to go and lace them up in Lehigh on Sunday against those Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. But I hope they don't lose their groove like the Flyers did before. But the Flyers before were playing through flaws before all the COVID issues happened. Now they can't really get going through their flaws, which is obviously and very quite clearly defense, but not just their defenseman's defense. It's been clear, which the staff has been stressing this, how forwards have been playing defense. Hayes has looked great offensively in the offensive zone. Not as good defensively this year. Raffles' defensive numbers are down this year. Uh, G's look good offensively. His defensive numbers are just average uh, this year when he's usually been pretty good. 
Patrick's trying to battle his way back, but he's a minus 13, so you would like to see a lot more out of him, obviously. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Lindbrom got benched last game. He's a benching in the near future. Um, Andreov's come in and performed all right, but not as not that great on the defensive end of the puck. Lawton's been pretty consistent on the defensive end of the puck. Voracek uh, showed his last year's uh, signs and then has kind of been struggling in this stretch, which has really brought down his defensive numbers. And then that whole first line is money defensively, or fair be Couturier and Van Riemsdyk, as well as offensively has been uh, netting most of our goals and been part of all, most, all or most of our goals, along with... Um, Hayes, who has 20 points, and Voracek and Giroux, who both have 21 points. And then Konechny, who was hot at the beginning of the season, has 15, along with Lawton, who was hot more towards the beginning and not in the stretch run, also has 15 points. So if you could really get both of those guys going again on both ends of the puck, since you would like to see Konechny really get into the game more, which you haven't seen as much in the stretch run because he hasn't seemed very confident and had that pizzazz that really gets him just going at the other team and really going. That's what the Flyers need. They need somebody that really comes at the other team, even in a game that they get their asses handed to them, like they did last night against the Rangers. You need to have somebody that just brings something, a fight, a big hit or something, a legal hit, obviously, that doesn't get you suspended, but a big hit or something that gets the damn team going into the next game. That's what Travis has been able to do in the past he hasn't done it recently. I need to see more from him. Andreoff's in the lineup. He's fought in the past to be able to do that. He should have been able to maybe do it yesterday to bring something in. Bunny's a big guy that should be able to stand up to people. Patrick, um, I don't really want him fighting, obviously, because of um, his past um, injuries and stuff. But guys like Raffle, if you're not stepping up in the fact that you stepped up in the past, maybe you should be trying to lay a bigger hit on or go up against somebody because when a guy like him fights who hasn't had many career fights, that will send a message saying, hey guys, we got to get our heads out of our rear end and really get going. And that's what's happened in the past. We saw Jeff Carter in, in past teams when he was here on little to very little occasion, but he would fight at times to just send the big message, hey, I don't fight. Jake does that at times. Uh, maybe he could have done that yesterday. Like I would have just liked to see, like Jamie said in his article, which was great, more spunk and more fire, even in a crap show of a game, just because you could have then carried at least that fight momentum into the next game. This game, there was nothing to take out of it because there was... It was just like A.V. said, an, an embarrassment, and a national embarrassment because we are on national freaking television. I mean, this was the worst time to have a game of this performance. At least it would have been better if it was only on our airwaves and not the national airwaves. I mean, I'm off of my soapbox. I'm just tired of how this team's protecting their goalies. Hard stats look like they do because of how bad our defense has been from the defense to the forward core. Other than um, Provy, who hasn't been as good as last year, but still been good this year. And I think Hager's actually performed solid. He just never doesn't have a guy that matches with him at all on our team. Uh, well, defensively, uh, to actually be his partner, which a Freeman, who we let go, probably could have been a guy um, if he could have got his skates going and played more savvy like he did before going down with Pittsburgh. Um, I think, uh, getting injured, I mean by going down, uh, he would be able to then have stepped in and actually done well here, too, like he did in the couple games in Pittsburgh, especially against us. Um, so I hope this team figures it out, but I don't think they're going to unless if they commit to trading for a defenseman. And they need to do it soon because they need to fix the defense, get a guy that calms everybody down. I've seen Goligoski in rumors. He's a good veteran, but I feel like he should be, as we talked about in the Disciples of Ed podcast, check that out when Rob puts it out later, that the episode we recorded last night. Um, <clears throat> they need to get a guy that just settles down the defense. And Goligoski would do that, but he should kind of be a last resort uh, because he's the older guy. He does it good. He can kind of settle it down. But Ekholm and Jomerson are better than Goligoski. And I would trade for one of those guys first. Jomerson should be easier to get since he's on an expiring contract where Ekholm has a very affordable contract that goes into next year for three points something. So he's not going to be as easy to get. But Patrick in a first, like I said in yesterday's video, would you do that? Would you have interest in that? That seems to be one of the rumored trades. Another would be given up Frost, since people do still have interest in him, uh, which makes sense due to his high peak potential, even though he's going through an injury right now. 
Uh, so I think um, those are guys that could be thrown around in there. I don't think Cam York would be in a trade um, for Ekholm, but we would have to wait and see. I think the Flyers have to go out and get a defenseman sooner rather than later. We've also obviously seen Jason Demers and David Savard mentioned uh, by the great group of Nitty Gritty along with Jamie Vascal. So uh, definitely, again, check out Flyers Nitty Gritty stuff. But this has been a reaction. Um, I tried to not do it last night, so I didn't go completely in on the team because I want it to be as tamed as possible because I also think uh, jumping on the gun and signing Justin Braun immediately as a knee-jerk reaction to Niski retiring in the offseason was a mistake and bringing in a complete offensive-minded defenseman in Gus uh, when you needed guys that were more defensive-minded since Sanheim, Myers, and Provey can all do it in the offensive zone. Um, as well as when you had Friedman, has the, had some ability to do that as well, you saw in the minors, in a little capacity um, as well. So you didn't need offensive guys. You needed guys that were more defensively inclined, like the Goligoskis, the Demirs of the world, the Savards of the world, getting them maybe in the offseason, getting the Jomersons of the world, or picking up guys of their elk that were in that free agency as well. Or getting maybe a Mete as a younger guy in the offseason and seeing if you could get him going and churning. I mean, there was different moves you could have done. I don't think Fletch set up this team. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty now looking at it, but I don't think he set up this team with the defensive grouping as well as some of us initially thought. And I fell into the trap as well, mostly because I thought our forward core would play much better for the defense to be able to kind of... I don't know what the right, what cushion the defense a little bit, the fact that it has a Gus and a Ghost on it, who I did not agree with benching and putting Gus in just because I think Ghost matches better with Hag. Since Ghost at his best, we have seen him play some defense in a couple groupings of games when we were on our run this year and not on our fall like we are right now when we were on our ascending, now we're on a complete decline, so we have to be able to figure this out. But putting Gus with Hag, that pairing has not looked good whenever it was together this year. Ghost and Hag hasn't looked that good either, but if Ghost is able to play like he did when he was up with Provy and actually be solid in the defensive end as well like he was for that handful of games, that's when I think that pairing could look better. And Ghost, big, big, big thing, gets the pass up like Provorov does from his zone up the ice better than other guys in the team when Sanheim's still inconsistent at that at 24, as well as Myers. So I think you need a guy like him in where Gus will make a pass, like Steve said in Disciples of Ed before, um, that will be if it's there, he'll make it and hit it, or if it's not there, he'll try to make it and then have a turnover. So you need to have Ghost in just because he can simply move the pass up through the zone, and the Flyers don't have consistency in their defense of being able to do that either. So you have to protect your goaltender better and to be able to move it consistently through the zone better from your own zone when you get the puck off the attacker sticks to be able to get it up the ice into the attacking zone. The Flyers have not been consistent at doing that. The forwards have to play much more consistent defense because from the top, um, I would say eight guys, um, because you have JVR, Cooch, Faraby, Lawton, Hayes, TK, Voracek, and Jeru that are all performing solid points-wise, even though Lawton and TK have fallen off recently, just when you look at their surface numbers. And then Provorov on defense has been the best uh, by far. And then Hag has been at an even um, plus-minus and has been solid if he just had a guy that could pair with him. You really just need to have this whole team come together and play like they did earlier, but a defensive front. That's how they played through their flaws before. They were able to outscore opponents and then get the momentum going through the scoring. But now when they're struggling with that, you know their defense is not going to be able to step up. So I think this team needs to, on top of a defender, as my closing point, not just get defenders like Jason Amir's. I think you could get two, honestly, because you could bring Braun out, who's more of a seventh defenseman at this point of his career, rather than having him in. You could get a Demir's that can more replace Braun, and then get an Ekholm or Jomerson that can then take a Gustafson um, out of the lineup. Um, so I think you could get two guys, but you also need to get a guy that's just going to go at people as a forward, like a good draw type. Obviously, you're not going to be able to get him but how big of an impact he made with Tampa. Get somebody that's an attack forward that's just able to bring some spunk. You have one in your organization. You let him go to San Jose in Curtis Gabriel. His fight and the way that he's sticking up for his teammates 
I might be old school, but that would bring a lot more fire in the belly to this damn team, as well as even the energy fight, like how he was for my basketball uh, Sixers fans, how McConnell brought to the um, court is what Pitlick brought to the ice, even while not providing a hell of a lot of points. He just brings that high, 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 high energy that really makes the whole team go and go, I got to get my head out of my butt because look what he's doing and I'm a guy that's supposed to be the core player of this team, not a guy performing like a bottom liner. So I think we need somebody that really is going to bring that high stretch energy. Andreoff did it for a couple games, but we know he's more of a flex guy between the AHL and NHL and not a steady NHL, or unfortunately. So I think you need to bring in someone that has done that. You need to bring in a guy that has done that. And I'm going to um, do a video either tomorrow or Saturday on some suggestions on people that I think should be brought in for some toughness on forwards, as well as who I think should be prioritized is my top two or three defensemen for the Flyers. So please stay tuned for that. But this has been a reaction as well as some suggestions on how to fix the team on that absolutely embarrassing crapshoot of a game. Please stay tuned for the look ahead to the Flyers and Islanders game, the better of the New York teams. Oh, God. Uh, after losing 9 nothing to the Rangers. I hope and pray that the Flyers to the hockey guys can protect their goaltenders better tonight, no matter who's in that. And they can just have a much better somehow performance because that's just how Philly rolls. We don't make sense all the time. It would just make the most nonsense that would just make sense how Philly rolls for the Flyers to be like, oh, we sucked against the Rangers, and then we beat the Islanders. And you'd be like, excuse me? Uh, that that would just be the way it is. But um, this has been a reaction to that 9 nothing embarrassment and also looking ahead to some potential trades and what I think the Flyers should do to correct these big, big woes that they have right now. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And also subscribe to Flyers Nitty Gritty, Steel Flyers, Payton on the Radio, Pure Low Wisdom, as well as Off the Wall Hockey. And check out FlyersNittyGritty.com and SteelFlyers.com. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everyone. This has been Sports Fanatic News. Like, comment, and subscribe below. For Projo, peace out, everybody.